Avraham, al tiga bayeled Abraham, don't touch the child. This is the beginning of a song by an Israeli singer-songwriter named Daniela Spector that refers to the Torah reading that we are about to chant. She continues in the song, Leolam techape sachre hashvil hanelam la chazor habaita. Abraham, you're always seeking on that hidden path to return home. Spectre's song talks about Abraham always seeking. And it's true, he never stays put. God tells him to leave Haran, his home, in Parshat Lech Lecha, and so he goes. He journeys to Canaan, the Negev, Egypt, the land of Dan in Canaan's north, and to Damascus before settling near Hebron, back in Canaan. And just when you thought he was done, nope, he's already packed up his tent, and now he's headed back to the Negev, And a few verses later, wait, how did he end up in the land of the Philistines? You just can't keep track of this guy. Now, on at least two of these journeys, it's very mysterious. God tells Abraham to go forth, but does not tell him where he is going. And this is what I think Daniela Spector is referring to when she says... He takes the shvil hane'elam, the hidden path. Before I took the time to understand the lyrics of Spectre's song, I'd never really been able to relate to the character of Abraham. I'd thought of him almost like a proto-Moses, an old guy, well-tanned, big white beard, shepherd's cloak, nice Teva sandals. But his humanness was completely foreign to me. But something about this song opened up Abraham's heart to me and my heart to Abraham. There's a haunting nature to it that reminds me that his story, while ultimately hopeful, is full of loss and confusion. In the Torah reading that we are about to chant, God tells Abraham, Kachna et bincha et yechidcha asher ahavta et yitzchak v'lech lecha el eretz hamoria v'ha'alehu sham leola al achad heharim asher omar elecha. Take now your son, your only one, the one you love, Isaac, and lech lecha go out to the land of Moria. There you shall take him, Isaac, as an ola as a burnt offering, upon one of the mountains, I shall tell you where. Despite starting with specificity, the, the message is quite cryptic. God gives Abraham the equivalent of the zip code, the land of Moria, but doesn't give him the address. And the message seems eerily straightforward, especially given its contents, especially given that it is so very contradictory to the whole story up until this point. Because God had told Abraham no less than five times that he would become the source of a great nation. God said, look up toward the heavens and count the stars if you can. So too shall be your offspring. Abraham had just become a father late in life and only so after divine intervention. God specified that it was specifically his miracle son, Isaac, who would uphold the covenant and carry it forward. And now it is that very Isaac who God says must be sacrificed. God spoke to Abraham that night, but didn't acknowledge what would have been the most painful thing. Everything that Abraham had worked for, all of the adventures and trials that he'd undertaken, everything he imagined about his future 
was now in jeopardy. It was all at risk of collapsing. In Bereshit Rabbah, the ancient collection of Midrash, which are creative takes on Torah, the rabbis imagine Abraham reacting to God's demand, saying, Bivakasha mimcha, please, I beg of you, have mercy. But this is not Abraham's response in our Torah. What does Abraham say to God's command that was about to ruin his entire life? Absolutely nothing. This silence grabbed me. What does or doesn't it express? Does it express, as it's often understood, his submission and his blind faith? Is Abraham calm, centered, and ready to do God's will? Or is he afraid, intimidated, in shock? Maybe he wants to cry out, but just can't find the words. Of course, how he's feeling on the inside is not answered, and it can never be answered. But even despite not knowing about Abraham's inner world at that moment, I feel so profoundly connected to him and to his heart. He doesn't speak, but his loss cries out to me. The loss of what has been promised to him. The loss of his imagined future. And it doesn't even matter that Abraham isn't forced to kill his son at the end of the story, because he doesn't know that yet. What makes Abraham's loss so relatable to me, relatable to me is that his story is our story. We journey on the Shvil HaNe'alam, the hidden path, without knowing the stops along the road or our final destination. Life is constantly breaking its promises to us. Our best laid plans, our dreams, are foiled, so often never coming to pass. But there's something in Abraham's story and in our Midrash that's more than just relatable. They actually can help us relate to one of life's hardest tasks, which is to make meaning of these struggles. There are two Midrashim in particular connected to his story that, that struck me. The first explores why God sent Abraham on the hidden path in the first place, not telling him where he's going. Rabbi Huna, in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, says, the Holy Blessed One at first causes the righteous ones to be perplexed and to direct their eyes up toward God for clarification. And only then does God reveal to them the upshot of the matter. Rabbi Huna says that being perplexed and confused is an essential part of the divine unfolding. It's not an error. It's not a curse. It's not a punishment for Abraham. His feeling terror, his feeling that confusion is a necessary step for him. It's a process that every righteous person must go through to achieve wisdom, insight, and faith. I found this Midrashic text to be comforting for all of us, not just people who are pious. It's comforting to think that moments in my life when I felt lost and confused, when I felt perturbed or discomforted, these weren't a personal failing. So often in these moments of life, I treat myself harshly. Why can't I know where I'm going? Why do I doubt my next step? Why am I comparing myself to people who seem like they have clarity, like they have certainty? Why am I doing it wrong? Stop! Stop, says Rabbi Huna. Stop! Flailing is an essential step 
in your process, in Abraham's process, in all of our processes, flail, flail, and flail again. But don't stop there. Direct your eyes toward God, Huna says. Ask for help. Pray for compassion and insight. This is what I was doing when I lost my prayer book this morning. I was praying as hard as I've ever prayed in my entire life. Please, God, let me not forget the Nusach. <laughs> Pray, seek divine help and in human help. The path may soon become clearer. And pray for help from the ushers and for everyone who helped me this morning. Thank you so much. <laughs> we never found the prayer book. <laughs> and what is the path? What is the path? It's one that walks towards righteousness, towards goodness, towards healing and liberation. And there's a second Midrash connected to this story that I think can also really help us make meaning out of our struggles. This one is focused on the meaning of the place where Abraham is to take Isaac, Eretz Moria, the land of Moria. Why is the place given that name, the ancient rabbis ask us? After all, it's a place name that's only used once in the entire five books of Moses and twice in all of Tanakh. The medieval commentator Rashi answers by picking up on a debate between Rabbi Chia Rabba and Rabbi Yanai, which reads, one of these rabbis said, the meaning of Moriah is that it is a place from which instruction, from which Hora'ah goes forth. The other said, Moriah is the place from which fear, Yirah, goes out to the world. And Hora'ah is related to the word Torah, meaning instruction or teaching. And Yirah is fear, but it's also wonder, awe, awareness of the majesty, of the power, of the sacredness of the one. Eretz Moriah, the place where Abraham is going, is a place of terror, and it is high on a mountaintop, so it too is a place of wonder and of awe. But most of all, it is a place of instruction. Abraham is there to learn about himself, about God, about his faith, and his love for his son Isaac. So too, in our moments of struggle, in our moments of loss, in our moments of screwing up and of failure, they are Eretz Hamoria, the place of fear and of terror, but also the site of growth and of instruction. A place of learning where we come face to face with ourselves, stripped of any kind of preconceived notion of how we should be or what we should be. And there it is that we find the one. It is a place that can be, if we let it, the site of our transformation. Shana Tova.